So an important topic in medicine, especially in outpatient medicine, is, is screening for disease. Many examples exist of screening for disease that, that a lot of the general public is already familiar with, such as mammograms. Mammograms are images that screen for breast cancer. Colonoscopies. Colonoscopies. Those are screening, those are procedures screening for colon cancer. Sometimes we do lab tests, like checking the cholesterol. Cholesterol. That's looking for the disease of high cholesterol, which then puts people at risk for heart disease or strokes. We also sometimes check labs for diabetes. The lab we check oftentimes nowadays that I use a lot is the hemoglobin A1c, which is a marker um, of diabetes. Now sometimes we also use questions, surveys, to administer to people or to administer to people who are at risk for something to get a sense of what their the likelihood is of them having a particular disease. One of the examples of that would be the Beck Depression Inventory, a series of questions to screen for depression. So all of these are examples of screening tests. Now one question that we should ask is, what makes a test a good screening test, what kind of qualities in a test are we looking for? What do we evaluate to decide and say, hey, this is a good enough test to apply to the public or to apply to a group of people? Now there's a way, a way to think about this. So a good screening test needs to have the ability to, ability to identify, identify true positive results. That's pretty simple. Well, at the same time, we want a test, a screening test that has also the ability, ability to identify true negative results. If a test negative, if, if a test comes out negative, We'd like to be have a good a good enough test to say, hey, it's negative, I trust that result. Ability to identify true negative results. So those are two qualities in a screening a test that we look for. Now, this these two points basically are also signifying that we'd like to at least minimize or have no false positives false positives and we'd also of course like to minimize or have no false negatives so a a test's ability or a screening test's ability to identify true positive results is called its sensitivity And sensitivity is equal to the true positive results. So the true positive, I'll just use a plus sign here for positive. The true positive results, it's a ratio of the amount of true positives over all positives. All positives. And that includes then the false positives. And this concept right here, the ability of a screening test to identify true negative results, is referred to as the screening test specificity and this the screening test specificity is equal to also a ratio and it's the true negatives so the ones that test negative and actually are negative for the disease over all negatives and all negatives includes the true negatives plus the false negatives as well so these are important concepts that I want to address. Now I think the best way to fully understand the sensitivity and specificity concepts is through an example. So let's get rid of some of this, all that writing, and 
really talk about an example. Let's talk about chest x-ray. Chest x-ray. And I'm going to abbreviate that CXR. Chest x-ray, which can be used to screen for lung cancer, especially in at-risk populations, such as those with a very significant tobacco smoking history. So chest x-ray for lung cancer. Now, a really easy way and a straightforward way to figure out the sensitivity and specificity when you're given a set of data because you need to do a research and, and test these screening tests out in a population before you can figure out the sensitivity and specificity. So we use this two by two table to organize our thoughts, to organize how the numbers really just pan out when you're doing a, a putting in place a screening test. So chest x-ray for lung cancer. Let's say we have, I'm going to put 26,000 people. We are testing 26,000 people, okay? That's why I'm going to put this number down here so we don't forget. Now here in this 2x2 two two table, this side, this left side here, is going to be the testing. This up here is going to be the disease. So here in this, in this quadrant, we're going to have positive chest x-ray. Here we're going to have negative chest x-ray. Up here we're going to have positive lung cancer, meaning that person actually had lung cancer after they test after they may or may not have tested positive and negative lung cancer. So 26,000 people. How many of these 26,000 people ended up screening positive with a ch by chest x-ray? Well, let's say 2,400 only. So 2,400 people tested or screened positive for lung cancer. And that leaves us then with 23,600 as the number of people that ended up screening negative. But how many people within this 2,400 that ended up screening positive actually had lung cancer? And that turns out to be only 130. And so we're left with here, 2270. So that means of the 2400 that screened positive, only 130 of them ended up having lung cancer. And how about with the people that screen negative? Ideally, we'd like all the people that screen negative to not have the disease. But we don't live in a perfect world, so 50 of those unlucky people screened negative but actually ended up having lung cancer. And so then we're left with 23,550 as, as the numbers here that screen negative and actually didn't have the disease. So now we have all the numbers that we need to make an assessment about the sensitivity and specificity of, of a chest x-ray for lung cancer. So let's bring this back so we can remember how to actually calculate these things. So now we have the numbers we need, so let's do the sensitivity first. The uh, true positive, so where are the true positives? Screen positive actually had the disease, 130. 130 over, now what are the all positives? Well the all positives are both of these together, and that's 180. So 180. So 130 over 180 equals about 72%. So that's about 72% sensitive, the, lung, the chest x-ray for lung cancer. Now let's go over the specificity. Specificity. So the specificity, true negatives. Where are our, where are our true ne negatives here? Lung cancer negative, chest x-ray negative. All these people, those were true negatives. 23,550. And how about all negatives? Well, all negatives are going to be that whole number. And that's going to be, we add those two together, we end up with 25,820. And so here's our ratio of this of, to get the specificity. And that ends up being about 91%. So now, someone says, hey, I want to get a chest x-ray to screen for lung cancer. How good is that test in finding lung cancer? And you can say, well, it has a sensitivity of 72% and a specificity of 91%.
And now that's part of the language that we can use in discussing screening tests for screening for disease.